this was a weird episode. I don't even know how to describe it, but it was just really weird because pretty much the whole episode was exposition. And I I I just was honestly kind of bored with it. And I mean, I liked the scenes in the first couple episodes between Loki and Mobius when they were having big long conversations, but for some reason in this episode I just was not really entertained and really into it with these conversations between Loki and Sylvie. It was just weird. And sure, there were a couple big reveals here that we're definitely going to talk about. But for the most part, it feels like, like, what what was the point of this episode? Because not really anything huge happened. And especially the fact that we ended off on a huge cliffhanger with them still on that planet. It was like, all right, uh, I don't really, like, am I supposed to care about this? And... Uh, if I'm being honest, it just feels like kind of like it was a waste of time because if you think about it, this series, or at least this first season, there's only six episodes. This was episode three. So we're already halfway through the season. It feels like the show just started. And for the most part, in the grand scheme of things, not much has happened. It's like, okay, Loki ended up at the TVA. He started working with them, chased down this Loki variant. We find out his female version and they team up. That That's pretty much all that's happened so far. And hopefully things really kick into gear here with the next episode. And big reveals and big stuff starts happening. But I don't know. This episode just... I It was not my cup of tea. But if you guys liked it, then good for you. I wish I felt the same. Uh, but also I don't want to turn, turn this into a rant or anything like that. So we are still going to be breaking this thing down in depth. All the big details and reveals, Easter eggs and all that stuff. Uh, but if you haven't already, um, just be aware that there is uh, spoilers in this video because we're breaking down the episode. And if you're here, but by now you're probably already seeing the episode. But anyway, um, so let's get into it. So the episode starts off Again, weird. There was a lot of weird stuff going on in this episode because I I never thought I would see the Marvel Studios intro thing and then hear a song play in the background that's like, there's something in the water. And it, it, was, it was just weird. Also, what I just did was very weird. But again, it was a weird episode. So we, when we start off, we're actually inside the mind of that Minuteman or Minuteman or woman. I don't really know how, how you would call it. Um, from last episode that was kidnapped by Sylvie. And it makes it seem like Sylvie and this person are friends. But then we, you start to realize that, no, Sylvie is actually inside her head trying to get some information about the TVA. So I did like this. I did like seeing a nice demonstration and an, an example of how this really works with her whole enchantment thing and see how she controls people and how she gets all this information. So I thought that was cool to see. Uh, but then when we actually get back to present day and what's actually currently going on, uh, Sylvie infiltrates the TVA, uh, but of course when she first gets there, she realizes that her magic doesn't work, just like Loki in the first episode, uh, but she's still able to take down those Minutemen, even without her powers, um, but... Loki then, of course, as we saw at the end of last episode, followed her through that door, so he followers through the TVA, and, of course, he grabbed his daggers, because B-15 wouldn't let him have her, have him before, but now, now he's got the freedom, and he went ahead and grabbed him. But, even though most of the Minutemen went off to protect the sacred timeline from all the reset charges that were sent out there by Sylvie, uh, there is still a little protection left at the TVA because Ravonna Renslayer, she approaches the two, the two Lokis, and Loki actually teleports them away to this planet called Lamentus One, 2077, and we find out that the planet is about to be destroyed, uh, and it's this moon that, uh, a whole planet is going to crash into and everybody on this moon is going to be destroyed and die. So they really don't have a way out of here now because the Tempad thing that they used to teleport there 
is like the battery is down and they need to charge it somehow. So that's their goal here and they reluctantly team up together. Uh, so they come up with multiple plans here. At one point they get on a train and we do get some, some nice stuff here where Loki is talking about uh, Frigga teaching him magic and all that stuff. Uh, but this was one of, the, one of the big reveals here was where they start talking about their love life and Sylvie kind of makes a joke out of it but then uh, she asks about Loki's love life and she's like oh well you were a prince on Asgard so I'm sure you had a bunch of princesses lined up or maybe even princes and he says well a little bit of both so yeah it, it's now officially confirmed that Loki is officially bisexual in the MCU which is definitely awesome because that's a big part of the character in the comics and this is a step in the right direction. Uh, again, we're do going big with diversity in Phase 4 of the MCU, and especially with the character of Loki. Uh, when the show started, it was confirmed that he was gender fluid, so now we got this confirmation. So I think it's great to see uh, that they're really sticking true to the comics and bringing in more diversity, especially since this is a character that we've been following for the past 10 years, but this is something we never knew about him, and now we're finally getting to find out these little secrets about this character. But then after this is where we get a little weird again because then Sylvie does actually end up falling asleep and when she wakes up, Loki is completely drunk and he's singing and stuff, which uh, honestly w was cool. I think Tom Hiddleston's a pretty good singer, if I'm being honest. Uh, but again, it was weird. Uh, but there was a cool reference here where um, he took like his glass or whatever, he threw it at the ground and he was like, another! And that is a huge reference to the first Thor movie where Thor, when he first came to Earth, I think he was drinking coffee or something like that, uh, when he wanted more, he threw the mug on the ground and was like, oh no, the, so that, that, I, I guess all Asgardians do that, um, at some point or another, that, that's just how they request more, more of what they want. So that was a cool reference there. Another cool reference is that we had Loki reciting the love is a dagger speech from actually Macbeth, which uh, is something I actually know about because we actually just read Macbeth in school this year. Um, so that that was pretty cool. It, it was kind of weird and randomly placed in here. And I don't think Sylvie had any idea what Loki was saying, but it was still cool to see. Uh, and then after this, their cover is actually blown. So they end up jumping out the train window. And we get some more exposition where Sylvie does reveal how enchantment works, but this is where we get probably the biggest reveal, where she reveals that this Minutemen and all of the Minutemen and everybody working at the TVA were not created solely for the TVA. They were all humans on Earth previous to their life at the TVA, and this is a huge reveal because none of them know that. So, clearly the TVA is hiding some huge things, and we've already talked about previously uh, the whole mystery with the timekeepers and how, like, are they actually real? Are they dead? Is actually Kang the Conqueror that's behind all of it? Is Ravana Renslayer actually evil because in the comics she's married to Kang the Conqueror? We don't really know, but it definitely thickens the mystery here and really, really makes me wonder if Owen Wilson's Mobius character did actually love jet skis as a human honestly i would love to see a flashback of that that would be hilarious but then the episode pretty much ends with this big cliffhanger of like all, all of a sudden that planet starts crumbling and just the crumbs of the planet just start flying at this moon as in basically in the form of asteroids and then the big cliffhanger end is that the arc is destroyed uh which was kind of their plan of how to get out of there but it wasn't really explained that well. So when the episode first ended, I had no idea that was the arc because they never showed it to us before. So I had no idea what was going on there. I was like, well, why is that a big reveal that that building was destroyed? Like, what what, what was that? So it, it was confusing. And again, just a weird thing in this episode because they, it, it, it was a weird episode. Uh, but I, definitely the least good of the three episodes, I still liked it but it was just it was just weird sitting through the episode like is this actually happening but um so yeah anyways guys let me know your thoughts on this episode down in the comments below did you think it was a little funky as well or did you like it again if you did then great i wish i felt the same um but i just didn't uh but also let me know your thoughts on the big reveals of the episode like loki being bisexual and also the fact that all of the tva agents 
were actually humans on Earth at one point or another. So definitely some crazy reveals here. We'll probably be doing some more videos about Loki throughout the week. So stay tuned for that. But guys, thanks so much for watching. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button so I can keep up to date on everything goes on in the Marvel life.